What's up everybody, I'm Greg Miller. Yusuf Mapar is here to tell me all about Secret Ponchos. It's out on PlayStation Plus, you should download it. But first, can you believe Men in Black might cross over with 21 Jump Street? Can you believe Star Wars might be the highest grossing film of all time according to Nick Scarpino? We're gonna talk about all that and more on Up at Noon. It's the news you care about with your normal panel of experts. The one and only Italian meatball, Brian Altano. Rap, rap. Rap, rap, indeed. Over here, the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hello. Now, Nick. Yes. We were all set to talk about The Last Guardian. Yes. Do we still care that it's under completely new conditions? The answer was no. Now we're skipping <laughs> that story to talk instead that breaking news for us, and it's old to you, Star Wars Episode Seven. They've re revealed the names of things. Yes, there's all, all the characters in the trailers, we know their names now. The little droid, BB-8. Yep. The dude in the, the plane, Poe Dameron. It's Poe Dameron. Then yeah. you got the guy, the stormtrooper, Finn. Then you got the girl, Ray. Then you got Kilo Ren. This is a news story and it's really popular right now. I don't care anything about it. But what I want to know, Nick, yes. is when we were sitting here getting ready to talk about The Last Guardian, again, mm -hmm. we don't care. You <laughs> brought up the fact that you, a debate started. Could Star Wars Episode Seven, The Force Awakens, be the highest grossing film of all time? Yes, I think it can. I Do you think, think it's it got will? I, I think it will. I think it will. I think we've got a, a long time to tease that movie out. It's got a lot of potential, and it's Star Wars. I mean, think about the lineage and the heritage of Star Wars. Think about all the people throughout the years that have been watching it that will go see this film. Think about when The Phantom Menace came back, and it wasn't the highest grossing film of all time. The defense rests! Uh, at the time, I, it probably was pretty close to the highest grossing I, film I would, of all time. I would say that the, the lineage and the heritage are the problem here. You think so? Yeah, I really think that, like, that it's, it's just like... You you know we we went to the same restaurant six times and three times the meal sucked mm -hmm. like and they're just like oh we have new oh, there's you know new Under new management, new management yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. and you're like I'm not gonna eat there like the, all the Yelp reviews talk about this one guy got diarrhea from it and there's a hair in the food <laughs> that was pretty much the prequels it was to hair and diarrhea but I don't think that people are going to take that and go into the new movie going like hey this is this is a you know fresh clean slate not mm -hmm. a lot of people really understand that like. Branding and, and, and the value of something that is very important. I think it's been sort of soured. Yeah, see, I mean, I'm, a, I'm in the opposite camp, right? I think there's a lot of us who loved the original trilogy, then the prequels kind of came out and weren't what we wanted them to be. Mm -hmm. Now I want to see a good Star Wars, and I want there to be nothing but good Star Wars. Oh, I'm totally in that camp. I'm with you on but that camp. I think camp. every single person who's a fan of Star Wars wants that, right? They, they literally want this to be as good as the first time they watched A New Hope. The yes. thing is that this is a comeback story. This is this is the return to form. People, you were burned by the prequel, sure. Yep. You don't know how you feel. But you're not as big in a Star Wars. You, but the more they talk about it, the more you get excited. They have they have uh, Han Solo back. They have Luke Skywalker. They have Princess Leia. They have the Millennium Falcon. They're using practical effects. It's a snowball that, even though I don't care about any of these people in the trailer, because who the hell are they? It's when we get to this point of like I'm excited to see those characters back and yeah. see the characters we already loved. Right? We never loved characters in the prequels. No. Was, when, Darth Maul, he's dead in the first one. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Yeah. Then what? You hated Anakin. I, I, like, I liked Obi-Wan. I liked Obi-Wan. I thought Obi-Wan was actually probably the best character in the whole thing. Well, I, liked, I liked Annie's slave owner. That was my favorite guy. Annie. It's only because you can do the accent and it's oh, slightly yeah, racist Annie, every time you do it. Annie, want to come over here? Uh, you got to drive, get in your uh, pod racer, uh, Annie. Uh, drive and uh, make me some uh, money. Uh, uh, he's just like a sick old man. Yeah, he's, he's probably, <laughs> and the kid. Uh, uh, I hope he comes back. I hope he's the one thing. It was so racist. He just he lives forever. He's an alien. You don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. So how long? You lives like. This, this, is, this is what that movie's up against, right? It's up against the top, Avatar. Yeah, right now the top three grossing movies are Avatar, Titanic, and Avengers. It's, uh, isn't it Avatar, Avengers, Titanic, or is it Avatar? No, Titanic? I think it's Avatar, Titanic, So James Cameron's got the top two He's spot. Two. He does. You think about those three movies, right? They all share one thing in common. They didn't have anything before them. There was sure. no, like, uh, Avatar episode one, right? There was no Avengers episode well, one. There was no Titanic episode Avengers one. The Avengers had a whole bunch of things leading up to it. The Avengers had a lot leading up to it. The Avengers had, like, seven movies leading up to it, right? So, I think, I think yeah. Star, Wars, like that. Star Wars casts a wider net than Avengers. Yeah. I think Star Wars, everyone has some kind of feeling about and Most are positive. I'm not the bi world's biggest space guy, but I like watching Star Wars movies. Sure. I, yeah, I'm sure. excited to see what happens. Avengers, maybe you're a DC kid. You never want to go. Maybe you're not into comics. There's different things there that seem to be missing where sci-fi gets around everything. I just feel like if, if and I think J.J. will do this, and I call him J.J. because we're on a first name we're basis. Friends. He's Why a friend not? of the show, J.J. Uh, Jimmy you Jones. know, you watch that trailer, and maybe it's because I am a huge fanboy, and maybe it's because I'm bringing that to it, but that trailer had moments that were Star Wars, like yeah. tried and true in it. Versus you'll watch, like, I'll watch something, you know, you watch the Captain America 2 trailer, or you watch Avengers 2, and it's cool, 
and I'm really gonna go see those movies and I'll be there first day, but it doesn't have that Star Wars punch. And I think if they can continue to do that for the next year, and JJ's been awesome at teasing things out, and you know he's gonna play ball. Like he's been doing all that all these crazy crossovers with Zack Snyder right. and Man of Steel and all that stuff. He's a fun guy. Um yeah, it's insane. I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a huge success, obviously. Okay. Obviously. I think it is a shot. Ticket prices are expensive. It's in 3D, right? Don't think you gotta go to the IMAX and all Maybe. this other jazz. I mean, so the thing is, I feel like Avatar was people treated Avatar like it was like buying a ticket for a ride. Right? It was like for two hours you get to disappear in this magical planet with space tigers and the blue people and yeah, stuff like that. Sigourney yeah. Weaver. And, and Sigourney Weaver and there's the guy in the wheelchair. And then you leave and you're like, wow, that was a great ride. And it, it, you wanted to pay, to pay that money to right. get in there. But I don't really know that Star Wars is one of those films that I that most people even care about seeing in 3D. So mm, right sure, off the bat, sure. you're, you're point. cutting five bucks off of every ticket. That's a good right? point. So if this is just a numerical, if this is like a, a money numbers game. No, you can't. It's true. Somehow Money James numbers. Cameron did How does the math eat. work? Money numbers. Money numbers. We're excited to say that Brian Altano has been poached by CNBC <laughs> to host the Money Numbers. Money Numbers. <laughs> There's so many of them. Money Numbers. Speaking of numbers, Mini Gregway, the Game Awards happened recently. It turns out two million people watched them, thus shattering what they did on Spike TV in the past. All right. What did we think of it? Did everybody watch the Game Awards? I was yeah. there. I watched parts of it. I watched parts yeah. of it. Yeah. What did you think? I think it's cool. I mean, I, I again, I think... My big takeaway from it was that you don't, like, we don't need TV anymore. Right. And, and traditional TV, like, when are we going to let go of the idea of TV and just come to terms with the fact that it's not a thing that we need anymore in our yeah. lives, right? Like, all we need is a distribution pipeline. We have that. Yep. And so, yeah, yeah. boom. Like, we make this show. This show could clearly be on NBC if they'd ever called me back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Who did you call there that you called? Uh, I, I just you called, called the main Seinfeld. line and I got, I got a recording. <laughs> you and called I the vending machine 400 messages. Hey, it's really, it's today. It's a good show. You should watch this one. Um, <laughs> There's some news from last week. You should check it out. We got I, the guy from Prototype 2. It's, it's weird because I, I was never quite as interested in, in, in the VGAs when they were on TV. Sure. And now, the last two years, they've been sort of like playing around with the format and yeah, figuring yeah. out what they're going right. to be. And now it seems like they hit a stride of some sort. Um, that is really working and it's resonating with people. This, this this year was definitely the year I thought. Now they have it. Next year's gonna yeah. be yes. really yes. tight. They'll really polish great. They'll polish it up. They know. brought out developers. You know, Tim Schafer was there presenting awards. They gave the Sierra folks the Lifetime Achievement Award, mm -hmm. and it wasn't a passatory thing before a commercial break. It was a, a polished package. They got to come out and talk. It was a really good thing. You know, they had, uh, you'll have to tell me his name, I forget, the p the pianist who came out to play them in the... Kochi Kondo. The, the Nintendo yeah. music. That was amazing. And then he, Imagine Dragons was the one thing. I'm like, oh, here we go. Because I was waiting for them to the, to slip back into like, here's Elijah Dushku to introduce Uncharted yep. 2. It would be like, I hate everything And she's happening. like, games can What's make us cry Dushku? just she's like hot. songs. She, yeah. had no, she, she had no point to be there. Sure, right. She wasn't there because like, she's I'm, authentic. I'm... Well, not even authentic. Because I, I don't, I, I'm not gonna throw around like you're not a real gamer. Yeah. I just mean like there was no introduction to be like, here's Elijah Dushku, who is this person in this game or this or whatever. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. You know what I mean? So to have Tim come out, to have all these different people, to have I Justine and Boogie on it, like you're showing that you understand how this works and actually get cool. Yeah, this yeah. is the culture. I, yeah. I feel like the uh, the way. The way that they put that show out, like, is is one thing. I think the internet model is is fantastic. It's obviously yeah. the numbers show that it's great. But what what really works for me is that it's it, it feels like the show grew up. Uh, if you mm -hmm, look at the mm -hmm. first, what was it, the VGX or whatever, the first ones they ever did. I thought it was VGAs I thought, were the first the VGAs ones. VGAs yeah, were yeah, the first yeah. one. They, okay, so the first video game awards they've ever done, the, the Spike TV one. Mm -hmm. Three minutes into the first one, they announced that Madden was the game of the year. And fireworks and uh, cheerleaders. and cheerleaders ran out into the crowd. And this was like two seconds in, and it's like it, we. This was supposed to be our Academy Awards, and could you imagine that, that happening? Like <laughs> yeah. two minutes in the Academy yeah. Awards. Well, yeah, last Academy Awards, they did order a pizza. So That's true. There was that. That's true. That. <laughs> That's true. So they don't treat that show with the know. same respect Not, as they no, used to. No, shut up. That was fun. But no, I, I get your point, and it's true. This you know. Hater. No, you're kind of right, actually. That's pr that's pretty. If, it, if the Academy Awards get like sort of regress and become dumber and dumber, and the Video Game Awards just get smarter by comparison, then you know, in but a couple kind of years, of, we could be winning this. But that's shit. kind of what's happening, it is. right? Like, yeah. I, I know that was it was kind of meant as a joke, but it really is kind of what's happening is is that more and more the people that are, are in touch with these things that we call quote unquote nerd culture are are winning, and yeah. and they're putting out things that make sense. Yep. Like right. you don't need. To pay for that much, like that much money for network time, you can stream it, and everyone can watch it, and they can watch it whenever they want, and you can put it on demand, and it's yeah, fantastic, yeah. and it's there right then. You know that makes sense. Whereas, you know, the Academy Awards is no secret; they they have been trying to get ratings up for that show for the of last course. four years, and they've brought in like James Franco and like all of these people to try to host it, and it's not really working. Because when I maybe think success, because I think James Franco. I love James Franco. I love James Franco. How dare you? I, Dave I Franco is more talented, though. Go on. There was, uh, there, there was there was there was a level of. Um, 
of respect that I found in the Game Awards yep. this year. Mm-hmm. That yep. I feel like that's the one, the one word I would use to describe it. It's that there's a respect for the medium, there's a respect for the culture, there's a respect for the, the people, the game, making, the the people making the games. Yeah. Um, I think even like the way trailer reveals happen were uh, not as hokey as they used to be in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, the commercial breaks were more game trailers, so it, it's sort of just like yeah, when you don't need real commercials. Yeah, when you don't need real commercials. It's great. Trailers, yeah. yeah, and it, it was uh, it was interesting the way it all panned out. I thought it was way too long. Exactly, I don't, I don't that's my big thing be... in terms of what needs to change next year. It needs to be shorter, and we need to fix the microphones there, and the yeah. sound balance. There was a uh, yeah, there were some technical issues, but there was a point where Jeff Keighley came out about half with you know, or, oh, yeah, it yeah. was an hour and forty five minutes in, and he was just like, "We're at the halfway point of the game awards." And and everyone was like, oh, universally no. went oh. what? What? Uh, really? Like, oh my god, how much longer Because it was good, for? but it's just like yeah. attention span. You know, exactly. you never know though. I mean I've done we've done some live programming here ourselves, right? And, yeah. and you know, we we don't always get to choose uh, due to some external forces how long we get to stream sure. things for. Right? Sure, Sometimes sure, sure. there are you you know, in order to pay for things, there's an economics behind it, so right. maybe he had to go that long. To kind of cover his, yeah, uh, no, no, like without his without budget. without TV being like, hey, you know, uh, Crank Yankers is on or Cops or whatever the f- comes on. <laughs> Spike, <laughs> your mind goes to Crank Yankers. <laughs> crank Yankers was a great show. It was a not. great show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what Spike bumps to after the v- VGX. Oh, so I don't know, probably a Bond movie. Yeah. yeah hey, let's have let's have an affair in a house on fire. Whatever their dumb game show is of, yeah. of the day. Um, but when you're streaming it, you don't really need to worry about that. You yeah. can just sort of be like, hey, we're on Twitch for a few hours. When you're done with this, you can go watch some Let's Play. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Final story of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Men in Black might be coming back <laughs> as a crossover at 20 for 1 Jump Street. This is weird. This is awesome. This is weird. This is awesome. I don't know how to feel about this. You, I just told you how to feel. It's awesome. I, this, is, this is like when Battletoads met Double Dragon. It's just dumb. It's, it's like two bad. good things that just you put together. Well, no, here's the thing. Men in Black hasn't been good for a long time. Right. Man, after I Men in Black will disagree. One, I, I liked the last one that came out with Josh Three? Brolin. I, I never it was saw good. it. I watched a little bit of it on TBS the other night. It, you got. Funny. You actually yeah, have to wait just... until. You have, it's it's not bad. I thought it was a pretty decent movie. Okay. Um, the second one was the. It was not really bad. Good. It was very Dawson's worst. Spoilers, but have you guys seen the end of Twenty Two Jump Street? No. Yes. But you can tell it to me. Okay. Awesome. Well, there's just spoilers. This, mute it right now if you need to. Well, no, I'm not even going to talk about the story, but the film ends and there's this in the credits. There's this montage of fake posters of all the like. Like no, it's like fake trailers too. Like fake trailers in it. of of all the the sequels that the, that it could get, and it's yeah. like you know twenty two jump, jump twenty three jump sheet. They go to space. Twenty four, they're in Africa. Twenty five, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're, they're like masseuses. Yeah, <laughs> they go and to it's, massage it's, school. It's totally it's like rush hour and all this other stuff like that. And they're just making fun of all these things. So this could have easily fit as one of the fake things to put at that movie. Yeah, and that's why I think it's like it's it's that's a great one off gag. Yeah, I can't see that idea sustaining an entire film for two hours. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think it said the Men in Black franchise is done. Nobody saw three either, other than Nick Scarpino. I, you know, See, I disagree they were, if they, they need to reboot it, so why not reboot it in this goofy way with these goofy guys yeah, who are already cops in their own universe? So now in this other, in the same universe, I, in black. Well, let me ask you this: Are we getting Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones? No. no. Okay, then go f- yourself. Wow. I don't Tommy think Lee Jones is too busy he, being well, old and cranky. Tommy Lee Jones yeah, is a little old, but uh, that was his character, though. He was just like, true. I hate the aliens. He was good in the third one too. He only, had, I mean, they only gave him like one scene. He had to eat pie. It was perfect. Where Josh Brolin played him. <laughs> No, he was in the, he bookended it. Remember on the yes, in the third yes. one. All I'm saying is this: it, I I don't know how to think about it yet. Jury's still out for me. I will I say my my gut it. reaction to it was that these are two sp- vastly different genres of films, right? Mm-hmm. And putting their their worlds together, it's just it's it's. I don't think it's going to work. It's I don't gonna see be how awesome. that's going to work. Totally, gonna it words. doesn't make sense. Like one of the, I mean, I'll go watch it and I will. I'll We're going to get the hell out of it. We're going to go to weather. I'm, by the way, I'm a huge fan of Twenty One Jump Street and Twenty Two Jump Street. Kay. I think what they, those guys did with that film was amazing. And you'll not, see. You're gonna be. You're gonna be eating your words. We'll see. I mean, it's the guys that who's bringing us this one. It's the guys from that did the Lego Movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same guys that did Twenty Two are now yeah. doing this one. So I mean, they know what they're doing. Yeah, they have a good pedigree. We'll see. We'll see. Speaking of knowing what you're doing, Greg Way, my next guest knows what he's doing because his company, Switchblade Monkey, just put out secret ponchos on the PlayStation Network. It's free right now on PlayStation Plus. He's going to tell us all about it and what's coming soon. Ladies and gentlemen at home, start clapping so you annoy your parents to welcome Yusef from Switchblade Monkeys right now. As I live and breathe. You stuff from far off. How are you doing? Good, Greg. Th- Thanks for having us. Thank you for coming. Mm-hmm. Just for you. Yeah. But you re- you represent Switchblade Monkey. Monkeys. All the monkeys. Yeah, I there's represent. many monkeys here doing this thing. Your game's out. See, this is rare. I don't have people on up at noon after their game's out usually. Usually you're dead to me then I throw you away. <laughs> but, but now it's out. Yeah. Secret ponchos. 
It came out on PlayStation Plus. Right. Uh, it's, it's a free month for December. Uh-huh. So and you can get it right now. Go download it for free. And, uh, yeah. So uh, what I want to talk about is your journey to this point. I met you years ago right. at a convention. You came up to me, little little pamphlet in hand. You're like, Greg, I'm a huge fan. Take care of this game. And I was like, sure, kid. <laughs> put in a never. No, but uh, I, I think right now it's one of those weird times to be a game fan, let alone a game developer, in the fact that anything can happen. I feel like, w- tell me, when did you guys get the wild hair to make a game and do it independent and go make this happen? We were luckily a little bit too dumb, so we, we, uh, <laughs> we didn't know what we were getting into. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know, I was I was working as an art director at, at larger studios, and a lot of my friends, they're all working at, you know, their big companies. Sure. Kinda, and you just think, well, let's just make our own game. We just kind of had this idea that if we all just chip in our talent, then we don't need any money, and then we can make our own game and take it to market. And of course. We, yeah, and it just like that, right? So we were, we were wrong. It was a lot <laughs> harder. But we didn't know enough to know it wasn't possible, so we tried. And by the end, we were just in so deep that we just kind of kept moving forward. Now when you say you're in so deep, what does that mean? Does that mean in terms of debt, employees, what? Oh yeah, so I mean the whole way this works is if if you work at a big company, someone's someone's paying you money to make their game. Yeah. If you want to make your own game, you got to you got to put all of your money up. Yeah, so well we just we our little brain child was, "Hey, what if we don't get paid for, you know, how long this takes, we could just do it, right?" Smart. So so that's so you kind of you're investing and then along the way, you know, all of us had babies, and our wives got angrier at us. <laughs> so, it, it was so did you keep your day jobs during this? Uh, some of us did, yeah. and I went full-time, like full-on in it, because we needed to coordinate things, and sure. our, our engineers were full-on. And, um, you know, but like Chris, he delivers Canada Post in the daytime and comes wow. home and makes music for Secret Ponchos. So. Wow. That, you're, you're doing it. You're bootstraps, people. In America, bootstraps is a good thing. Oh, okay. You're from Canada. I know. No, yeah. I'll talk slower. I know. I'll change it up for you. No. So you're all working on this game. You're in too deep to get out. I mean, did you did you always know it was going to come out and be a thing? Or were there were there nights and days where it's like, where is, isn't going to happen? Oh, yeah. At, at, um, and we, we built um, a prototype, and uh, we took it to PAX 2013. That was sure. where Sony scouted us. That was pretty much like the big Hail Mary, as you, you said it before. Yeah. Um, we didn't, we just were out of money and we just didn't know how to take it to market. We're like, wow. let's just put the last of our money to, and just show the world what we made. And that was where um, Sony, uh, you know, a- Adam Boys and his, his clan came over and said, hey, we like, we like this game. How can we get it? Have you thought about bringing it to PS4? So did you immediately pour your heart out? Like, thank God we're broke. Or were you like trying to keep it together? You're like, well, we have many interested parties. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we try to act cool. I'm sure we're not very good at it. So they, they know. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> your threadbare pockets, the moth flies out when you get your business card. So was it then, I mean, they come through, and then what does Sony offer you to, to keep you going? Do they just give you money to make it exclusive, or how does that work? Well, actually, you know, I even though we were very flattered, they, they wanted us as one of their kind of indie, you know, um, initial flagship kind of games, sure. um, we told them that we couldn't do it because we wrote our game in a, it just wasn't for PS4, yeah. and we would have to like redo it basically, mm-hmm. and it would it would just cost a lot of time and money, and they, they just listened to what our barriers were, and they said, okay, well, you know, we can send you dev kits, we can give you support, um, we can give you our engine, their proprietary engine to build the game in, yeah. so, and then we just kind of worked with them, and, and it was pretty cool because it was the engine that they used to make Journey, and I think since then, it hasn't really been pushed as far. And yeah. then, so their engine team got really excited about what we were doing with Secret Ponchos. And they started working on our game. I would see, like, check-ins from Sony and stuff. And, and um, yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, that's fascinating, right? Because Journey is such a different game than Secret Ponchos. Secret Ponchos is, yeah, it's PvP. You're out there fighting each other. Every, every one of your characters has different abilities, different, like, classes, right, in terms of fighting. Right, right. Journey is walking through the desert. It's a beautiful game. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I'm not knocking how beautiful it is. And hopefully, Secret Points is, is a beautiful game too. I think you did well. I think it's pretty. Don't worry. That, and like that, so that, that's funny. So we get well. First off, you, Sony helps you out, gives you the dev kits and stuff. Yeah. What and it changes your mind, I guess, on letting them help you. What does that mean in terms of like you with Xbox and stuff? Do you have any? Is, are there exclusive deals here? What's happening? No, no, they were pretty cool. Um, they, you know, we didn't have to sign any exclusivity. I can never say that word. So you did it. You nailed it. Um, and um, yeah, they were actually really good. Like. Uh, the kind of peak of their coolness was at one point we were like we really need to stress test the gameplay yeah. and let's just let, can we if we could put it on Steam early access we could do some beta testing and sure. stuff and we were, I was like, pretty nervous about telling, asking Sony about this and yeah. they were just like you know if it makes your game better go for it because it's just going to make the end game better for everybody so yeah I was, I was surprised okay so then now bring me up to speed when they come to you and they say we want to make your game a PlayStation Plus game 
Right. Is that an easy decision? No, it's, it's difficult because you, um, you know, you're crunching the numbers in your head and you're like, man, if you give the game away to four million people, well, we just lost, you know. Yeah, because I guess that's important for people to know, right? What, the way it works is that, not going to specifics, Sony gives you a lump sum of money and say for a month, this gets the game for free on PlayStation Plus. Right, right. And then you have to go, well, that would equate to X number of copies. Can we really sell that? Before? Right. Yeah. And for us, you know, we knew that we could, um, I mean, we felt we could sell that many copies, but... Yeah. For us as a multiplayer game, we knew that the li the lifeline of the game is the size of the community. Mm, and, good point. And so for us, we had a different kind of scenario than like a normal single player game would, where we had to we just decided let's invest in in having a community so sure. players can search for matches and have fun. Because I mean, we, there's this always going to be a set of pro obstacles. And what set of obstacles do you want to deal with? Do you want to deal with financial obstacles, or do you want to deal with not having users and having a really cool game? And, and yeah. we decided let's just. Make a game with users. If it's good and people play it, maybe that'll create some other... Sure. You know, Multiplayer games have that ability to keep on going and keep growing and doing different things, right? Right. So what we did actually was we reinvested that that buyout money back into the development of the game to make... What? Okay, so have you taken a paycheck yet? No. What are you, do what are you doing? Uh, How are you surviving? <laughs> It's um you know we you know we all put away savings and stuff and and that's dwindling quickly yeah, I imagine you go into I think it's good it's good for everyone to go into starving artist mode once in a while and just <laughs> create something and it gives you an appreciation if sure. I if I have to go you know get a job at Burger King um, next month then I'll be like I'll be so grateful someone's giving me a paycheck <laughs> <I'm sorry>. it's, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> I, I I can imagine that would be the case so then you're talking about building a community how has that gone since launch. You had a rocky launch. Let's oh, not, yeah. Let's not lie. Yeah, um, the networking exploded on us. Like, <laughs> like it was, you know, we're eight guys testing in our basements. Yeah. And, and, um, and uh, we, you know, we, we stress tested it on a, a larger scale, but nothing can, comp nothing can test on the equal scale of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people hitting search at the same time. And, sure. And we thought we had it perfect. We were so careful testing. And yeah. just things started, like smoke started coming out. <laughs> no. huh. And um, But we, uh, we, we quickly... Re we had reacted, we responded quickly, and right. we, we got some patches out. It was the worst bug, because the worst bug you can imagine is when someone's characters get deleted. And right. that, that's what would happen if too many people search at the same time. So that was... Uh, we that's got, trouble. We got a lot of angry tweets, and I'll, I'll share those one day with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Sony was very supportive and helped us actually get the patch through right away. Yeah. And so it was, it was a couple days of that, and uh, it was pretty scary. I'll, sure. I'll, I have to imagine you've been working... How long have you been working on it? Five years. Five years and then you put it out and there's a giant problem yeah that's trouble five years and we're we're very um you know we wouldn't be doing this if we were just in it for the money we're yeah. really in it for making something respectable so yeah. that was like a nightmare for us you know yeah but but, but um i i think you know i i'm i understand now better though that the process of a multiplayer game is you kind of got to respond to sure to how people, you got to be part of that community yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so we're I mean, every every week that the game's out, we're going to make it better, and we get. To, it's not like it's it's released on retail and that's it. For a multiplayer game like ours, it, you just build on it. And yeah. This is the foundation, and you know, hopefully, in six months, in a year, it's it's a it's it's on a greater scale than what it is now. Sure. And that's interesting too. You know, you look at games like Minecraft, League of Legends, games that IGN reviewed at one point and then became completely different things. Right. Do you see that with Secret Ponchos? Oh yeah, definitely because. Um, we actually had a choice in the beginning to make a lot of content or or use that same amount of resources to refine content sure. and bu build depth. And we just kind of, you know, we bet on gamers appreciating the depth. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the right choice, but I, that's I, I fundamentally believe that gamers are 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 into that stuff because we are. And so if we make a good game that they want to play and the characters are meaningful, it'll create opportunities to add other stuff. Sure. And so that's that's our game plan. Why? Well, uh, so real quick, give me your critique of the IGN review. We gave you a 7.0 and said, great combat, deep stuff, love this. It's what, bare bones a little bit is what they said, right? right you right. jump in and once you learn the mechanics of each of the, like how many characters are there to do? There's five. Five characters. Damn, I was going to yeah. say that, but I didn't want to be wrong. Once you learn all that, right, then it's kind of like, okay, what do I do with all this? Okay, are, are we being honest here? Yeah, totally. Okay. No, I, I saw the number. I was like, what the, you know? Um, <laughs> but then I read the I read the review, and it was very fair. Like, yeah. um, they obviously played the game, and um, they said the game was fun. Yeah. The game is pretty, and that it had a lot of depth, and um, so that's great. And then I think that it's it's fair that it doesn't have a lot of content, you know? Like, um, it's not, it's not... 
it's not your big studio release with like 50 characters yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and a single player campaign and a multiplayer campaign. But, you know, we're also not a studio that has 100 people to throw in a separate sure. single, and we're not charging people 60 bucks for it. Yeah. So um, I think it is a fair review. Um, I think you should probably add a couple. Well, that's too late. The, the points have been added. There's no more to go. But then, so, what do you take? Are you going to make more content for the game? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, that's actually, it's not just you guys. Almost all the all the press and the gamers, they really want to see more content. Sure. And actually, the takeaway message I got from this was, you know, like, if a game doesn't hit your expectations, people, and there's a lot of hype, people are like, oh, this game sucks. I was expecting more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a letdown. I don't know how all these people independently... Um, presented a different story that the game has a lot of potential and they're rooting for it to grow in the long run, yeah. which is great for us because we have created new content. Hey. So yeah, we're doing a huge content drop. We we didn't tell anybody about it because we didn't up at noon exclusive. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got two characters in the works, uh-huh. um, which is uh, two, like there's five characters. Two more is a big you yeah, know, that's jump. a nice jump. And then we have uh, two maps uh, oh, nice. ready to go, and the maps will be released for free. Um, and we only have four maps right now, so that's a substantial increase too. Nice. So we're going to do a big content drop. Our first priority is just kind of like still working with the community to clean up any networking stuff that people find. Yeah. You know, and then once that's uh, once that's done, we're just going to you know we we'll go back to polishing this content. You know, the reason we didn't ship with all this content was we just wanted to refine it a little bit more. Sure. We didn't realize. Um, it might scare people that there's not going to be more content coming, yeah. and we don't really know what we're doing with PR, so we didn't like announce it or anything like that. I think you have a great idea. You, you get your core gameplay, you get the core mechanics down, and then you build on it. Like you're saying, right? People didn't have high expectations because they didn't know much about the game. Now they come in, they love what they get, and now you keep adding to it. You could be the next League of Legends. Oh, well, I'm at the ground floor. That would be great. Spaghetti Western League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> Yousef, you're a pleasure. Thank you, you so much are, for coming in. I'm glad to see you be a success. I'm glad this is all happening for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Seeker Ponchos is out right now. If it's still December, go download it for free on PlayStation Plus. And if it's not, buy it. You gotta, I, I would have bought him another sandwich today if I knew he had no money. He's taking no <laughs> salary. This poor, he's wasting away. Look at this man. This is now, no, no human being should be this skinny. Up no, no, here. it's not a pity party. We, we chose our fate here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming by. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to Yusuf, Nick, Brian, and you, my audience, watching at home. Remember, please share Up at Noon with your friends so it gets bigger and better like the blob and just takes over everything. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be answering comments the first hour this video is live, so come talk to me and tell me your favorite multiplayer game of all time. Mine? I, I don't know. No Mercy on the N64, does that count? Smash Brothers! The new Smash Brothers is really good. Smash Brothers. Oh, what? It's Smash Brothers is fine. You played it last night. I know, but I, I, was, I was inebriated last night, and Nick was beating me pretty easily. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back next Monday at noon with a brand new show, but until then, I'm going back to bed. Hey,